Hello my friends, this is Eric Parker with One Number Tableau Experts and in this week's quick tip video we're going to cover what is really the difference between an extract filter and a data source filter in Tableau and why is it super super important. Okay, uh, so I had to learn this lesson a hard way with a client uh, so hopefully you don't have to or maybe this helps you in some ways. Now let's just start by pulling up Tableau's order of operations. Uh, There's an image directly from Tableau's website. So you'll notice that the first two things that you would see on Tableau's order of operations are extract and data source filters. And and actually, in an older version of this order of operations diagram, they were even kind of shown at roughly the same level. But I want to talk about how there is actually a really big difference um, between these things, right? Um, and so what I'm going to start with is by showing you that I have set up a few different connections to uh, just like the orders table from the sample superstore data source from Tableau. And um, I have added, I've got one that's just a direct connection right now, which we'll use in a moment. I've got one that's got a data source filter on region equals west. And then I've got one that's got an extract filter on region equals west. Okay. So I could kind of I, I, let's just do it. I'll just go ahead and show you what those look like. So if I go to orders, data source filter, I have created an extract, in fact, and you can see that up here in the little filter, this is the data source filter, right? Uh, okay, and so we'll talk about like how you can use that flexibly in a minute, but if you ever want to add a data source filter, you go at it here. So like I came here, I said add, and I said, hey, region uh, needs to be west for example. Okay. Uh, now that's a little different than how I set up the orders extract filter version of this data source. There's no data source filter there, but what I have is if I edit the extract, right? So let me go ahead and do that. You would see that there is a filter here in the extract dialog that says region keeps West. Okay. So first of all, just like what's the difference between those? Okay. Or what's like the performance difference or the size difference? So I'm just going to pop a folder a file explorer over here to show you the size difference between these. Now they're both minuscule because this is a small Excel file of like, I don't know, I think this table is like 10,000 rows by 40 columns. So it's not really a, really a large amount of data, but I think this topic is most useful in situations where you're dealing with tens or hundreds of millions of rows of data. So notice that the uh, version of this extract with the data source filter applied is about twice as large as the one where the extract filter is applied, right? And uh, I don't know, that's, it's not always going to be roughly two to one like this. It's going to depend on your situation. Uh, but basically, the if you apply an extract filter, and then create an extract, it's likely going to be much smaller than if you'd created a data source filter. So why is that? Okay, now let me get over to the version of this that doesn't have an extract yet, uh, if it'll let me. Okay, um, actually, I may even just sort of diagram this, okay? So give me a second here. Uh, so let's say that this is the, let's say this is the extract filter half of our diagram, right? Now we have this table of data, let's call it, uh, again, I don't know, I'm just going to ballpark this. So 10,000 rows by 40 columns, right? And so if we do an extract filter where we say uh, it is like region equals west, maybe this cuts it down to roughly, I don't know, a quarter of the data or so. So let's say that our resulting table is 3,000 rows by 40 columns, okay? So yeah, we have just made our data source quite a bit smaller. Um, and I guess I'm also saying like the extract will just contain this table here, whatever happens after the extract filter. And you can't really edit that ex unless you go back and create a new extract, okay? So the difference would be if you did a data source filter, you are starting at the same place, right? You've got your 40 columns by 10,000 rows. Um, and then, yeah, you added a data source filter, but what happens is you've actually, the extract is first going to execute off the entirety of the data source. So the extract will be 40 columns by 10,000 rows. And then now you have your you know data source filter of region equals west. Okay, so your extract actually contains all of the data, even though 
you added a data source filter. It's that's just getting past, you know, before you get into building your worksheets and before your user sees anything, but your actual extract contains all of the data, regardless of what filter that you've added on data source. Um, so I, I was working with a client, I thought we were being smart, adding a data source filter, being like, hey, you know, only keep data from the last year. And we were trying to be like dynamic about that with the calculation. Um, and but our hope was like, hey, this extract is too large, it's failing, let's make this thing smaller, but that really wasn't helping. So we did some more testing and looking into this, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's not going to work. This needs to be an extract filter, right? Um, so again, just to show you the differences between those, so if I go to this connection that you know does not have a filter applied yet, right? if I pop in here to orders, uh, adding a data source filter is done through here, right? So I might say, hey, like region equals west, Okay, that's a data source filter, which can actually be applied to a direct live connection or to an extract. Okay, so that one can go either way. Um, but the extract filter specifically is if you go to extract, and usually you'd have to say, I, I think I already have an extract here, so this is just if I want to recreate it. Uh, but what you would normally have would be an option to add. So I would say like add filter. Uh, and then here I'm going to say, you know, region equals west. And, and you, can get a, you can get into the weeds a little bit more here. You'll see you'll have some different options about like conditions. So you could say like it's got to be greater than or equal to 2022 or whatever condition you want to write. That's fine. Um, so that's the essence of an extract filter. So if you are trying to add a filter early on in Tableau's order of operations to limit the size of an extract and speed things up, um, if it's at all possible, you'd like to do an extract filter rather than a data source filter. Okay. Uh, now, let's just for a moment talk about what are the benefits of a data source filter, because there are a couple things that data source filters can let you do that extract filters do not, right? Because the extract filter, you added, the extract created, you're done. Uh, but with a data source filter, you could do something like pass a parameter back to it, uh, and that would control what the user sees. So for example, here, right now, it just says region equals west. But I've sort of pre-written this calculation that says, hey, does the region equal the region parameter, right? This is all based on this calculation. It's uh, based on this parameter here. So let's say I say region equals central. So if I go back now and edit my data source filter, let me actually remove where it's region and I'll say add, and I'm going to have it be based on the region parameter filter and just keep when it's true. Now the thing about this is that this could change, right? So if I pop back here to my data source filter sheet right now, region says central. And if I change the parameter to south, now it's showing south. So you can actually pass values from a parameter and or calculation to be a data source filter, um, which is pretty cool. And actually, one of the most common data source filters that you will see is people doing things like uh, permissions for users, like row level permissions, right? So you might say something like, hey, you know, the customers should only be able to see themselves. So I'm going to add a condition and say like, hey, does the customer name equal their uh, username on the Tableau server, right? So only if this returns true can they see that data. It'll get passed to the data source filter. Okay, we've actually got a whole another blog post video on that. So I'll put a description on that for row level security if you want to check that out. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an overview of comparing extract and data source filters. You know, data source filters, they're kind of dynamic and they can be uh, pretty useful to you. Uh, but uh, an extract filter is going to be super useful when you need to limit the size of a data source. So if you need help setting something like this up, let us know. Uh, we do office hours where you can book us and just work with us for an hour at a time to solve your biggest, most pressing needs. Also, we just do like full size projects. So you can always hit us up for that as well. Um, cool. We got videos like this every week. So just let us know if you ever have a suggestion or if you're stuck on something and you're like, hey, I need a little more clarity on what you were talking about there. Uh, we're happy to help. So, all right, we'll see you next week. Until then, take care.